Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sports Outlet. I'm Alex Mitchell. And I'm Maximilian Burgos. This week, we're going to put bias aside and take a look at the upcoming NFL schedule for Week 9. Thursday night football, five and two Bills versus the three and two, three and five Jets. How about that one? I feel like the, the Bills are really going to do well in that in that game. Yeah, I, I really feel like the Bills in this game are going to come out and just really, even though the Jets have been playing well recently, I feel like Tyrod Taylor is probably going to take over the game a little. I feel like the Bills' defense is definitely going to shut down the the Jets. There's yeah. no way that the Jets are going to pull this one out. I say 27 to 10 Bills. Ooh, well, I actually have the game a little closer because the Jets, even though they have been better, they've been playing in some close ones, including against some good teams like the Patriots. So I actually have Bills 24, Jets 21. That's close. That's yeah. pretty close. Our first matchup of Sunday, we're going to have the Atlanta Falcons at 4-3 and three versus the Carolina Panthers at 5-3. and three. Now, I'm going to have the um, Falcons, actually, at 28, Panthers 24. Um, I feel Cam Newton's going to continue to struggle a little this year. He's been kind of on and off, um, hit or miss on the game. I feel like the Falcons have really been hit or miss. I want to give this to the Panthers. I mean, the Falcons have been really inconsistent, and Matt Ryan has thrown a lot of interceptions for someone that was so consistent last year. So I feel like the Falcons the Falcons almost lost to the Jets. Like, that game was way closer than it needed to be. So I feel like the, I have to give this one to the Panthers. I mean, the Panthers have been inconsistent, but at least, you know, they – they could, I feel like they can pull this one out. Well, the Panthers may have been inconsistent, but however, the Falcons have a really strong D, and if they can get the run game going behind Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman, they could really like just run away with the game because that can grind out the clock. And then they also have their um, deep threats in Julio Jones, Mohamed Sanu, and Taylor Gabriel, which are of all big quality options. And like we've seen, Julio Jones can just completely take over a game. Yeah, I mean, you're right. But I feel like the Panthers got this one. <laughs> Cincinnati Bengals at the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right. I feel like I want to give this one to the Jaguars. I mean, Tom Coughlin has been really solid with the Jaguars. And I feel like Leonard Fournette is just a beast. He does, he, he does things that rookies shouldn't be able to do against NFL defenses. Yeah. Yeah. And their D has just gotten nasty with, the, uh, with Mar uh, Marcellus Bennett. Not, Mar not Marcellus Bennett. Um, oh, um, Mr. Darius from the Bills. Clyde Campbell. And Clyde Campbell. Like, that, that, that line is just disgusting on D. And they're going to tear up the Bengals' uh, offensive line. Like, they had, what, 10 sacks in one game this, this, this oh, season? I think twi they've done it twice this year, I think. Yeah, that's the only team in that NFL history to do something like that. Like, the Jaguars are going to take this one and run. Yeah, I, I personally, I feel like the Jaguars are going to run away with this game. And not even because they're solid on offense. Like, Blake Bortles is a game manager at best. But like you said, Leonard Fournette, it almost looks like a video game for him. He has two 70-plus yard runs in back-to-back -back weeks. I mean, it's literally insane. The Los Angeles Rams are sitting at 5-2 and two against the New York Giants, who are sitting at 1-6. and six. And I, personally, am going to have to give this game to the Rams, 24, Giants 17, because Jared Goff's been looking really good, and the Giants, to say the least, have been very um, subpar this year. I'm a huge fan of Cooper Cup. I have to <laughs> love Cooper Cup coming out of college. Uh, Jared Goff has been really solid this year. Todd Gurley has done really well. And honestly, the Giants, with all of the injuries on our team, there's just no way they can compete with the just sheer talent that the Rams have. The Ra Giants are not deep on, de uh, not deep on defense, like depth-wise. And they just... They just don't have the weapons to compete. I love, you know, the Giants as, like, my secondary team, you know, New York team, but the Rams got this. Like, I know this is a New York market, but, I mean, to be honest, the Giants, they've lost all the receivers but Sterling Shepard, who's listed as questionable this week, and their line is just pitiful. I mean, Eric Flowers uh, <laughs> just lets people get – I mean, he may as well, they might as well just ha have an extra receiver and not have him there. just might have had a cardboard cutout of him and it'd do a better job. Uh, Denver Broncos, we're sitting at 3-4, and four, um, visiting the Philadelphia Eagles at 7-1. and one. This is going to be a really good game. Any way you put it, this is going to be a good game. The Broncos' D is still solid. Brock Osler is starting, so that could, be, that could mean anything. But Carson Wentz and those Eagles, they look good. They're sitting at the top of the league right now. And 
Carson Wentz is an MVP conversation, and I don't know. I want to give this to the Broncos, but I feel like the Eagles are going to pull it out. I mean, they're just a different team than they were last year, and they just picked up Jay Ajayi. Yeah. So the, it, they turned an already good offense into an even better offense. Yeah, I, I almost say that this offense is basically elite at this point because the, not that they're putting up 35 every single game, but they're constantly moving the ball. Carson Wentz has 19 touchdown passes this year. He's looking like an MVP candidate, to be honest. And just uh, I don't – I don't like to see how Jay Jai will fit into this Eagles offense, but like the Broncos are really solid. So it's going to be interesting to see how Carson Wentz comes to us. I, I think they'll probably be the best defense he's faced up to this, this year to this yeah, point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're going to have the Indianapolis Colts at the Houston Texans. And for this game, I have Texans all the way. Colts 17, Texans 31. Deshaun Watson has been putting up points like it's nobody's business. And this offense has been rolling. And the Colts are a shadow of what they used to be a few years ago. I, I just have to quote Russell Wilson here. Just go ahead and give him the rookie MV, like the oh, yeah. rookie of the year. Like Deshaun Kaiser, in that game against the, C- the Seattle Seahawks, him and Russell Wilson went to war. There's the first time in NFL history that two quarterbacks put up plus 400 yards, threw for four touchdowns, and ran for, thir- for 30 more yards. Each. Each. Yeah. It's, like, it, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. He's playing at a level that he's not supposed to be playing at. Oh, no. And, like, you look at some of his threats. You have Will Fuller, who is the ultimate deep threat. Like, there was one point during the year where three passes he caught on the rope were all touchdowns. Um, you have DeAndre Hopkins, who had over 200 receiving yards last week. And then you look at the Houston D. Well, they have suffered some, like, serious injur- injuries with um, J.J. Watt. They're still a pretty strong D. They still have Jadavian Clowney, and I just don't see the Colts coming anywhere close to winning this game. For our next game, we're going to have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sitting at 2-5, going to New Orleans to play the Saints, who are sitting at 5-2. and two. I feel like the Saints got this. I mean, the Buccaneers, you know, Jameis Winston has done well in all of his years in the NFL, but this just he's just inconsistent this year. Just I don't feel it from him this year the same way like maybe I did last year. Like, he's just struggling, and I and I – Wonder, you know, if it's his, the receivers or what exactly it is, but they're just not utilizing their weapons properly. And Drew Brees is, like, one of the best quarterbacks to have ever lived. Like, he, he will go down breaking more records than even Peyton Manning at the end of his career if he can keep it going. And I, the Saints got this all the way. I, I feel like that game should be, like, 10 to 40 like the Saints are gonna put big numbers especially with their defense playing better yeah like one thing I've seen from both these teams this year is while they they're both very high scoring offenses but um the Saints have just been able to I'd say outlast their teams better like I've seen a resurgence of Drew Brees like the Saints the past few years have been around 500 maybe a game or two above or below depending on the year but this year I don't know what it is like they've really just surged and the Bucks have once again underperformed. It's just been a rough year overall for the Bucks. We're gonna have the Baltimore Ravens sitting four and four at the Tennessee Titans who are four and three. And for this one, I'm gonna have to give the Ravens a slight edge, 27-24, uh, because I feel that the Ravens D is very strong. However, though, that it it could go back and forth because Mariota has been on and off this season. Joe Flacco looks like a former, like, he looks like a shell of himself. And I don't even know if he's, we don't even really know if he's going to play this game. This game. Like, is oh, he? no, I, I don't know. Like, he, if Joe Flacco doesn't play this game, I think the Ravens may lose by double digits because Ryan Mallett just does not look like an NFL quarterback. Yeah, no, I feel like the Bill, I feel like the Titans definitely have this. Marcus Mariota is a really good, it's a really good quarterback. And they have DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry in that backfield. Yeah. Titans got this. If DeMarco Murray can carry the run game like he does this year, the Titans will do well. Uh, however, the Ravens D have been really good at forcing turnovers this year. That's true. It's the Washington Redskins, he said a 3-4 and four at the Seattle Seahawks, who are 5-2. I feel like this is going to be the upset of the... Of the week? I feel like this is going to be the upset of the week because, like, the Raven, the Seahawks just finished playing a thriller, like, oh, against, yeah, yeah, yeah. against the Texans. And I feel like that team... Either they're going to come in flat because they gave it their all in this last game and the Redskins are going to be able to capitalize on that on a tired Seahawks team or the Seahawks are just going to run away with it because, I mean, Kirk Cousins doesn't look the same this year. That 
The offense doesn't look the same. We're missing all of its weapons. You know, Pierre Gasson's gone. Deshaun, um, Deshaun Jackson. Jackson, Jackson is gone. Like all those, all the, those great players that carry that offense are gone. Yeah, like I definitely feel this game has the makings for an upset. However, I feel like it's gonna be a little bit of the opposite. I feel the Seahawks D is really gonna come out, make a statement, especially with the 12th man behind them, because that's a difficult place to play. And like you said, Kirk Cousins just hasn't looked like himself. The receiver who they signed to significantly improve the team in Terrell Pryor has been benched because um, he's been underperforming. And I've, as, as long as Russell Wilson comes out and keeps their offense going, because they started out slow, but they've been really picking it up the past few weeks, I feel like they shouldn't have any problem. Arizona Cardinals sitting at 3-4 and four at the San Francisco 49ers, who are actually 0-8 on the year. For me, this is my upset of the week. I have the Niners getting their first one of the year against the Cardinals. It's going to be 18-15. to 15. I think it's going to be an ugly game. I don't think it's going to be fun to watch for anyone, but I do think the 49ers are going to pull out their first win of the week. I thought that the Rams 49ers game was going to be an ugly game where the, 40, where the Rams just marched all over the 49ers, but the 49ers came to play that game. And I feel like in this game, the 49ers are going to come to play, and you know the Cardinals are going to want to you know not be beaten by a winless team. So, yeah, the game's going to be ugly, but I feel like it's going to be the war on the ground. Adrian Peterson, when he first came in with the Cardinals, looked good. And I feel like maybe he could, you know, play off of that a little bit, and it's going to be a war on the ground. Yeah, Adrian Peterson, if he doesn't have a good game, the Cardinals don't stand a chance because Carson Palmer, their starting quarterback, is hurt right now. And it's going to be, if Jimmy Garoppolo plays this week, it's going to be interesting to see how he does in his first start. One of the premier matchups of the week, we're going to have the Kansas City Chiefs, who are sitting at 6-2 and two at the Dallas Cowboys, who are 4-3. and three. So for this game, I have... Um, the Chiefs winning 24, the Cowboys 21. And I feel like this could be a real close nail biter. But in the ongoing Ezekiel Elliott saga, he's once again suspended. So I don't know how that bodes for the Cowboys. The Chiefs got this game. I have no doubt the Chiefs got this game. The Cowboys defense is not as good as everyone thinks. The Cowboys offense is going to be really hurting without Ezekiel Elliott. And, you know, Des Bryant, to me, is not an elite receiver. I feel like he doesn't get those catches. And even though that the Chiefs are struggling with their defense with Eric Berry missing and, you know, they're starting to get exposed in that back end, I don't feel like Des Bryant can, exp can capitalize on that. I feel like the Chiefs' offense can control the game with Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill and Alex Smith as the game manager that he is. I feel like they'll control that game from the gate, and the Chiefs will win easy. I feel like the game will be 35 to maybe 20. Yeah, I mean... If the Chiefs offense rolls like it can, it definitely can be all Chiefs all the way. But once again, like there adds in the factor the Cowboys always do come to play. So it can be an interesting mix. I have the Oakland Raiders who are sitting at three and five against the Miami Dolphins who are four and three. The Raiders got this. Yeah. The Raiders got this because the Dolphins they just traded away their number one running back and they're already struggling this year. Jay Cutler is not he's not a good quarterback <laughs> for, right now for the for the Dolphins. And you know, Tannehill is obviously out for the season and Matt Moore is not a starting quarterback. No. So with no run game and no way to move the ball down the field, I don't see them winning. And the Raiders have you know are playing better now than they did in the, in the first half of the season. I see them winning more games. You know, Derek Carr is playing better. So I feel like the Raiders got this, and it should be an ugly game where the Raiders come out big on top. Yeah, I feel like the Raiders definitely in this game have a chance to really make a statement because they haven't played well in the past few weeks. They just had a bad loss to Buffalo. And as, if, they, if Derek Carr can come out, have a good game uh, like he did two weeks ago in that uh, thriller where he threw the game when he touched down with no time left, or Marshawn Lynch can come out and really get it, uh, really um, pump up the offense because I mean he's done nothing since week two and he was ejected two weeks ago and suspended for the last game so as long as the Raiders can come out and really make a statement I think this can actually propel them to possibly a wild card spot for our Monday night football game of the week we're gonna have the Detroit Lions who are at three and four um, at the Green Bay Packers who are at four and three and for this game I'm gonna have the Lions 24 the Packers 21 and the reason why I have this is because Without Aaron Rodgers, the Packers just aren't that good. Their defense 
is just really bad. And their offense, I mean, Jordan Montgomery is okay as a running back, but he's been hurt recently. And Ty Montgomery. Yeah, uh, Ty, Mon- Ty Montgomery has been hurt recently. And the um, Jordy Nelson, I mean, he's not going to really do much without Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you need a quarterback to throw you the ball. You're right. I feel like Matt Stafford has been cheated this year in a few games where the Lions should have definitely won and they didn't. To whereas last year they were, he was comeback king, coming yeah. back in what eight eight of nine games. Oh yeah, it was ridiculous. And like he like he set a record with that. And like Matt Stafford and those Lion team are better than they're playing than their record shows. And I feel like this is the game where they can show that they're better. It's a divisional game, and you know the Lions always come to play those divisional games. The Packers are gonna play hard, but the Packers just don't have it on defense. You know, and they don't have Aaron Rodgers who elevates the entire team. So. Yeah. I feel like the Lions got it easy. Yeah, especially because Matt Stafford's really shown he was worth that contract this year. Definitely. Yeah. And so that's that's going to do it for us. Um, if you like to get involved with Lions Television, please email us at ltv at tcnj.edu. For LTV, I'm Alex Mitchell. And I'm Maximilian Burgos. We'll see you next time.